Hello, I'm Dr. Gunderson. I'll be your professor for the next 15 modules or semester. It's usually about 16 weeks all wrapped up. I'll be teaching World Civilization I this semester. And I just want to cover a few bases with you before we get into the course. Um, uh, we're going to cover a lot of ground. <laughs> And some of the civilizations that you, that you may not be familiar with, or you may be familiar with, but just not in depth as we're going to get into this semester. Uh, but let me just go over some of the major topics that we're going to cover. We're going to cover civilizations beginnings, the first four civilizations, and the Olmecs. Uh, really five, the first five civilizations. And when we cover this first unit, we're going to spend probably Oh, f almost five weeks just with this unit. And that's because China and India deserve so much attention that they've given it extra chapters in this textbook. And th fittingly, because China and India are emerging nations in the 21st century, uh, China's economy will overtake the United States economy at some point. They just out-exported Germany uh, last in the spring of uh, 09 or spring of 10, uh, 2010. And these civilizations represent a, a significant chunk of humanity. Um, you're looking at probably two out of every five people in the world or e are either Indian or Chinese. So they are significant civilizations. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't be doing other things during that time period. We will be doing something else. We will be actually writing our research paper during that time period where we spend some time covering uh, China and India. But let me cover the basics of the course for you. Uh, there's actually three components, uh, three major, comp uh, four major components. Um, you have 15 weekly modules. Uh, they're quizzes, they're online quizzes, they require a Respondus Lockdown browser, and they're timed. But you have uh, extensive time to be able to answer them. Uh, that's one component, and each of those represent a, a fraction of your grade. Uh, then you have the discussion components. You'll have five of those discussion components. You figure about every three to four weeks you'll have a discussion component. And in these discussion components is here where you will engage in significant um, a syncretic work with other students. Um, it, it's imperative that you follow the instructions uh, only because they are going to require you to be able to uh, add a segment of new information to what something has already been posted. Like, let's think of it as almost like a, uh, a encyclopedia entry that you're adding another section to about something else. Um, so those are significant components, and they do make up a fraction of your grade each. Uh, then you have five regular scheduled tests. Those five regular scheduled tests are all essay. They're online. You'll be required to use Respondus Lockdown Browser, which will not allow you to cut and paste or do anything else other than take the test during the allotted time given. <coughs> the other component of this course is the research paper, and there's two corollary assignments that go with that. Uh, the major component of the research paper is not so much the length of it. It's only four pages. Uh, the key component is uh, you being able to use EndNotes and a bibliography uh, in writing a research paper using EndNote-style documentation, only because Almost everywhere else you go, all you'll learn is MLA, and I think it's imperative that students learn both styles. The other thing that <clears throat> I wanted to uh, go over with you besides that main assignment of the research, the other main assignment of the research paper, which is worth 200 points, uh, there's two corollary assignments. They're graduated assignments towards the research paper. Uh, one is your bibliography. You will be sending in a bibliography of the works that you to write your research paper. Of course, your textbook is not included. And uh, the other assignment uh, is to write an introduction uh, to your research paper. That is the first paragraph of your paper. 
and you'll need to have established a thesis statement and everything and you know, pretty much you're going to say in the paper uh, telling me that in the introduction. So that's the research paper. Um, the other, the other uh, components of the course really are learning components and that is something we also need to focus in on so you'll know where to go to find the information. Each module has an instruction page to it. That instruction page tells you what to do. And if you will follow along with those instruction pages, it will take you through the module uh, and better prepare you for the weekly quiz, for the regular discussion forums, and for the essay test, which will come up towards the end of each major unit. Uh, there's basically five major units, but there's 15 modules it's broken into. Um, some of the major topics that I wanted to talk to you about that we're going to be covering are, as I said, civilizations beginning China and India. We're going to spend an inordinate amount of time uh, looking at these two civilizations because they represent some uh, profound differences in philosophical and religious outlooks in the world today. Uh, then, we'll, of course, we'll study the Olmecs with that. We'll study Egypt and, and we'll study Mesopotamia which is basically, you know, a lot of the Bible covers that information. Uh, the, the second major unit that we're going to cover is going to be the uh, Greeks. And uh, I, I set aside a specific block for them only because I think that they are fundamental to better understanding world history and as a cornerstone uh, to, to world history as they help to spread knowledge and, and thought and learning and culture throughout the Mediterranean. Uh, and the third major unit that we're going to cover is going to be Rome. Rome represents a hallmark in civilization in that for the first time you have a huge centralized government, a bureaucracy literally, run by patricians and, 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 and plebeians, but mainly patricians, who control society and, and, and basically as, act as an aristocracy of the people with a, an occasional emperor. Um, now, this is also a cornerstone to our civilization because they brought us banking, municipal government, roads, bridges, uh, aqueducts, all over Western Europe, uh, all, the way, all, all the way to Spain, there's aqueducts that the Romans built. This is a hallmark to, to, to their perseverance and their, their ability to construct things and create a world society in which uh, the world revolved around some central idea. Uh, the third major unit that we're going to cover is the early Middle Ages. We'll cover Byzantine in there and Islam. Islam represents a significant and fundamental change in, in world history in that it, it follows the Western tradition of thought based upon Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and then, of course, the seal of the prophets, um, um, uh, Muhammad. Um, and I, I, I don't want to digress right now and, and get into Islam, but Islam represents a, a significant change and a growing uh, religion in the world today. Indonesia has a, a huge Muslim population. Pakistan's in comparison is nothing. Uh, India has almost the amount of Muslims uh, that, that, uh, that, that Pakistan has. So they have 145 million, I think, in India. Pakistan has about 165 million. So, um, these are significant populations, plus the Middle East, and it's a growing religion. In fact, it's one of the fastest growing religions in the United States uh, today. Then, we'll, of course, we'll cover the late Middle Ages in the fourth unit, um, covering some of the events of the late Middle Ages. Um, the next unit, basically, the final unit, covers a, a, a smattering of things, but, but they are largely grouped together because they're important and they fit together. As a cohesive unit, and and that is uh, the Crusades. The Crusades brought a tremendous amount of knowledge back to the new world, or to the old world, and it gave them food for thought on how to move forward. And then you have the Reformation, which shatters Christianity, and then you have the Hundred Years' War, the, the discovery of Africa, and the exploitation of Africa and the Americas. So that's 